Hey guys, we are back on YouTube. I have three boxes to my left, a guest in the background. Grab your popcorn, grab your soda, and don't leave. All right, so Christopher is gonna come on the episode today. And as you guys know, this means that the episode is gonna be full of bad puns. Oh, I mean, great puns, decent jokes. Potentially some great jewelry if Christopher is in a good mood, am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely, and sometimes if I'm lucky, he'll bring me some goodies. So um, we're just gonna cut this introduction super short because I wanna get Christopher on and I really wanna um, wring out his brain for all the great facts because he really is a sponge. You really soak up all the good stuff all the good gemology facts, you know that? One thing I am gonna remind you guys is don't forget to like and subscribe. And there's a bell on your screen and I'm gonna need you to ring it right now so you don't miss out on what we've got coming up in the future. I'll remind you at the end of the video, but you should probably just get it done now because after Christopher blows your mind with all the great stuff that's gonna come on today, you're probably just gonna forget. So I'm gonna scoot over and we're gonna bring Christopher on in. Um, I just have to Back. say that crack about the puns may have left me a shell of my former self. So. Oh. Just saying. All right, three boxes. Three boxes. Is there a card? There's a card. This guy might feel pretty naked running the race without this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that card took a turn. <laughs> um, I do the puns, not the jokes. Do you know that there's a race today? A big one. What is the big race today? The human race. <sighs> she calls me out. She calls me out for the puns. All right, let's do this. Um, race. Hair and tortoise, tortoise shell, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna have to say right now, nothing has been harmed in making this video except maybe my um, ego when I was told I have bad jokes. A lot of you know that we've talked about organics. Tortoise shell is an example of an organic, but like ivory, it is no longer, I don't wanna say produced, I don't wanna say mined, I don't well, say, what it's, do I say? It's, it's, uh, the trade has been restricted in it. Items uh, can be legally traded if they have documentation showing that they were produced prior to 1975. Right, um, but anyways, we're gonna not talk about that today because I wanna see what's in the box. Ready? See what's in the box. Wow, that's beautiful. It's a very old piece. What is, oh, is this a fan? Nope. It's a lorgnette. Oh, I lost my glasses. I don't know mm -hmm. where they are. They're somewhere in the studio. Mm -hmm. Man, this person has real bad eyes. <laughs> but mm -hmm. today we are not talking about lorgnettes. We are talking about tortoise shell. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, yes, the reason we brought this one out here is more for the material from which it is made, which is tortoise shell. Um, it's actually very difficult to uh, find tortoise shell. The shell is basically carved into a piece like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have hair clips that are tortoise shell, but they're plastic. Yeah. And it looks just like it. it so I don't just see like the it. point in harming an, a tortoise when you can basically make plastic that looks just like it. No, and, and honestly, the plastic would even wear better. Uh, because this is an organic material. Uh, so it comes from the hawksbill uh, sea turtle, mm -hmm. which is uh, critically endangered, and that's why we, we don't trade in those anymore. And it's basically keratin, same thing that your uh, fingernails are made of. And uh, oh, cool. because of that, it's actually, you know how your fingernails wear and chip and break over time? Um, that basically has the same durability. So. Typically, you know, you would have items like this that were very gently used. Uh, you would sometimes have uh, decorative jars, uh, things like that, um, were primarily what tortoise shell was made from. A lot of hair pieces, actually, a lot of mm -hmm. Spanish hair combs, the ones that would kind of do in the back. I think it's important for us to learn about because this is a channel all about gemstones mm -hmm. and jewelry, and this is a part of our business, and therefore we're going to mm -hmm. talk about it today. But I. I have lots of tortoise, of the plastic tortoise shell though. Yeah, and, I think it's and as beautiful as these items can be, nothing is as beautiful as an actual hawksbill sea turtle swimming That's through true. the ocean. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Uh, with these, you like you said, it was carved. So you have, uh, you know, being that it's made of a, a material with the strength of fingernail, uh, it's very, very suitable for carving, and you can even get those nice twists here. You can get the nice pierced effect here. It actually works very similar to horn. So uh, one of the things that I want to kind of show you today is what you're looking for, because it's one of the things you don't really inadvertently want to buy toward a shell. 
Um, you know, you want to be able to identify it just in case you're concerned about whether what you're buying is horn or plastic or actually tortoiseshell. So I'm going to show you a few little different things about the differences there. Cool. Okay. So that being said. So we'll take this piece over here. Yeah. Relax. Oh, wow. That's it's very beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, just bracelet. Plastic? Plastic. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. This is to what you were saying. With the colors that we can replicate with plastic, there's just absolutely no reason to uh, use tortoiseshell anymore. It kind of looks similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really not that different. I think it's beautiful. And I think tortoiseshell, mm -hmm. when you have it in plastics and hair or jewelry, I've seen a lot of like tortoise, plastic tortoiseshell looking earrings. Mm -hmm. It's a classic. It's very, And it's very a classic pattern. that we can manufacture and we don't have to harm any other animals. Absolutely. But also, and it's going to wear really well. Yeah, and it's going to wear much better mm -hmm. than the original organic. I think these are super pretty too. And I'm guessing mm -hmm. these are plastic as well. These are also plastic. Mm -hmm. You know, on this channel, I know I've, I talk a lot about, oh, I want big jewelry, I want real stones. Mm -hmm. This is probably the first episode I would prefer plastic. Absolutely. And it's pretty neat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So look at guys, I mean, you would have no idea that these are different materials. Yep. One of the things that you're looking for when you're trying to identify is uh, you want to look at them under the microscope. Yep. So when you're looking at the cause of the color, when you get down deep in the microscope with a uh, tortoiseshell piece, what you're gonna see is small little points of color. So um, almost imagine like an impressionistic painting oh, I love with those. just tiny little bits of dark and light uh, causing the color in there. And that's gonna be very distinctive from the plastic, which is gonna be more continuous. You're gonna see big patches and blotches of color. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times you're gonna be uh, seeing swirls that are all continuous. Here, any swirls that you see are just gonna be dot, 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 dot. And um, the other thing that you're gonna look for while you're under the microscope is you're gonna look for Bubbles. Oh, in plastic, right. And can't, isn't there a test that you can do with, you heat up a needle? Yes. And you can try and burn into the plastic. Yes. Now that's one that we typically don't recommend because it's, it's destructive. Jinx ten, you owe me a soda. There you go. So with destructive tests, you know, if you do have to use them, you try to find somewhere out of the way. Well, if it was tortoiseshell, it's the smell is what uh, you're actually you know, looking for. If you do uh, a hot needle test with that, then it's gonna actually smell somewhat like burnt hair. Uh, yeah, because it's you know similar material, the keratin. Um, so you're going to get a burnt smell with that. Here you're going to get more of a uh, smell, just a, a more chemical smell, uh, with other materials like celluloid, which is also uh, similar. Uh, well, horn, horn, you would actually get more of a keratin smell as well. Uh, celluloid and some of the others, you'll get more of a camphor smell, okay. or just a much more chemical chemical smell with it. So one of the things, other things I want to show you about uh, the identifiers, and this is one of the key identifiers for, for separating out uh, plastic and its uh, other imitators from tortoiseshell, it's fluorescence. Okay. So I'm going to see if we can actually get it here in so this light. We one, might need to... What does fluorescent look like? So the fluorescence for uh, tortoiseshell is actually a very distinctive chalky blue. Okay. So very blue, but a very, very dull chalky blue. So of course it wouldn't be one of my uh, guest appearances about me pulling something out of That's my pocket. Your pocket, because you're very Poppins. <laughs> this is Christopher Poppins. There's always something in there. Oh. So this is another piece. So uh, this is a uh, plastic piece as well, but you can see the patterning on it has been made to uh, done very very well to replicate the look of tortoiseshell. So we're going to put this one right here as well. Actually, let's put these like this, and we'll be able to see the fluorescence. So let's see what we get in the normal light here. Yeah, oh, shows cool. up actually quite well. It. So here you can see we've got a very distinct blue, a very, very blue chalkiness. The black areas have a um, you know little bit of it, but you can see just the thin film of it over it, but the light areas are very, very blue. Here you've got a little bit of blue, but it's just not quite as blue. It's a little bit more whitish blue. Very, very deep blue, very more whitish blue here very, very white. And then on these guys right here, nothing. Oh yeah. Just not much of anything at all on those. A little bit on this one. What's in the other box? So, another box? Yeah. Sure you want show. another box? Yes. You haven't had too many boxes. Okay. She wants another box. Oh, guitar picks? Guitar picks. Is this what they are, is that there? Please yes. tell me that's plastic. Yes. 
So one of the other things I looked for, and uh, I even checked with a couple of uh, luthiers, is uh, to find a uh, tortoiseshell guitar pick. Oh, cool. Um, tortoiseshell is actually the holy grail of guitar picks uh, so for guitarists. Them. They don't, they can't make them anymore. Uh, the only ones that you would be able to find out there would actually be um, uh, old ones, you know, from a long time ago. The problem is, is you're taking a guitar pick and you're strumming it against steel strings you might get at best six months of use out of a tortoiseshell pick because it's literally just going to disintegrate as you use it on there so you long don't long find them use. anymore. A plastic one you can get just much, much, much longer. You can get years out of a plastic cool. one depending on how much you play. But uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is the tortoiseshell is such an iconic material for guitars because of the, the sound. They just say nothing makes a sound on a guitar string like a tortoiseshell does, that even the plastic ones are made to look like They're tortoiseshell. Pretty, yeah. And if you'll grab me those other ones out of there, even companies that don't make them like this still use the turtle as an icon. That's oh. why this, this company calls these picks Tortex. Even though they have nothing to do with it, That's they're so still cool. alluding to the turtle because they're alluding that their pick sounds more like the tortoiseshell the sound. I think today's episode, you know, we definitely mm -hmm. had more plastic on the show, but mm -hmm. I think it's important to show you can use these like really beautiful simulants. Mm -hmm. And we actually did an episode about vegetable ivory, which we'll pop up the link to mm -hmm. on the video. And vegetable ivory is uh, looks very similar to ivory from an elephant, but mm -hmm. it's you know, it's not gonna hurt these these animals. What do you wanna do a closer look um, at? I'm gonna say this bracelet because you know how much I love jewelry. So take a closer look at how um, you can see right through the, the piece, how it does look, you know, initially like mm -hmm. tortoiseshell um, and how you have that kind of those classic colors, which I think are really beautiful. Yep. What about you? Uh, me, I want to show uh, again the uh, close up of, uh, if we can get a closer look at the surface here. Uh, again, that's one of the things you're going to look for. If you happen to have a UV light with you, that'll help even more. Look for more of an organic growth pattern on the surface if you think it might be tortoiseshell. And with the plastic, if you've got your loop with you, look for bubbles if you uh, think it's plastic. to turn this channel into a vessel for positivity. So comment below and let us know what you're doing to save the environment mm -hmm. and make sure that we have a wonderful world for other people to live in as well. See you soon.